One of the more recent Rocking Creed videos I've been asked to cover for some time now is Ricky Conlon, and to be honest, I had never thought about covering him. But to be fair, I've covered Clubber, Tommy, and Mason, with the first two at least being memorable, so I think it's fair I do cover Ricky in some capacity. With that being said, while not quite as larger than life compared to his predecessors, Conlon still has a presence and visceral attitude at times, notably in fights with and dialogue towards Adonis Creed. While we've yet to see much of his background before the Creed films, perhaps there's a little more to his character than we know. Is he just a villain, or is he similar to champions of the past? This is why Ricky Conlon is unique. Let's talk about his comparisons to previous Rocky antagonists, his fighting style, his motivation, and more. Let's first recap on what we know about Conlon so far. Feel free to skip ahead to avoid the recap, but be warned, you may miss some important details later on in the video. While little information is known about Ricky, he mentions during the press conference that he came from a poor and humble background, with his father working on the docks and how he climbed through the ranks of boxing on his own. In 2015, he was the number one best pound-for-pound -pound boxer in the world and the lineal light heavyweight champion with an undefeated record of 36 wins with 28 by knockout. However, his future career is in jeopardy as he was sentenced to serve seven years in prison for gun possession charges. His last fight was scheduled to be against Danny Stuntman Wheeler, the number two pound-for-pound -pound boxer and WBA, WBC, and Ring Magazine champion, also undefeated for 31 fights. However, at the weigh-ins, Wheeler and Conlon got into a heated argument, causing Conlon to break Wheeler's jaw with the right hook, resulting in the fight being canceled. Now looking for another opponent, Tommy Holliday, Ricky's trainer and mentor, presents the option to fight Adonis Creed Johnson, the illegitimate son of Apollo Creed. Although Conlon refuses because of his belief that Adonis was leeching off of Apollo's name and didn't deserve the title shot, Tommy reminded him at the end of the day it was about his family. Ricky proceeds to train for the fight after Adonis agrees to Tommy's offer and at the press conference talks down about Adonis and his past. The two eventually meet in the ring where Conlon continues his trash talking and dominates the first round but is shocked when Adonis cuts him on the cheek. The match is eventually even as the two begin trading blows and Conlon knocks down Adonis in the 11th round thinking he won. However, Adonis gets back up and fights back in the final round, knocking down Conlon for the first time in his career. Ricky would still go on to win by split decision, but gives his respect to Adonis, claiming that he's the future of this division and to wear the Creed name with pride. Ricky would serve his sentence, though it's likely he was released early on good behavior. He would move up to heavyweight and meet Adonis in the ring again for the WBC and lineal heavyweight championship. However, Adonis was able to study his weak points and with perhaps age catching up to Ricky, defeats Conlon in the second round and retiring afterwards, at least for a few years. What is Ricky's motivation as a character? In my opinion, I think part of him wants a worthy challenger and a worthy opponent. Although we don't see it, I speculate he's facing a similar situation that Mason Dixon faced, a lack of opponents in the heavyweight division. The key difference here is that Conlon has a worthy rival in Danny Wheeler, but as we see in the first Creed film, we know how that goes. This would also explain why he doesn't want to give Adonis a shot. Beyond what happened in his past, from Conlon's perspective, Adonis is virtually a nobody that had one professional fight, and at best, fought no names in the underground fighting scene, which his trainer agreed to add to Creed's record to make him seem like a worthy contender. There could also be resentment because he assumes Adonis had it easy, again not knowing Creed's actual past, Adonis is the son of legendary heavyweight champion Apollo Creed, one of the greatest of all time, and already had a path to success because of his father's reputation. Conlon came from nothing and worked his way up the ranks to get to where he is now, and because of that, he's yet to find anyone worthy of pushing him to his limits. Because of his status as the number one fighter in the world, perhaps Conlon feels he is worthy of being overconfident and trash-talking at times. 36 fights and no one has been able to defeat him or knock him down. Despite his lack of faith in Adonis' fighting ability, this attitude has changed as Ricky is cut and soon abandoned strategy to instead trade punches with Adonis throughout the fight. It's not until the 11th and 12th rounds where we start to see a change in Ricky's demeanor. He can't believe Adonis is getting up, and when he is knocked down, he pays respect to Adonis. During the rematch, while Ricky's back to trash talking his old ways and wanting to prove that Adonis is once again a fluke by defeating him for the titles, Adonis quickly shuts this down in the second round and Ricky once again respects Adonis as his opponent comes over and says, good fight. There is a subtle hint of respect going into round two, where Ricky mentions that Adonis is a good champion and had a good run. 
How does Ricky Conlon stand as an opponent? It's worth mentioning that while Adonis had a natural ability to be quick and was younger than Ricky, Adonis remarked that Ricky was still too fast, and as we see in the fight, Conlon was able to quickly counter Adonis with combinations. It's also implied that Ricky is naturally strong, given the fact that he broke Wheeler's jaw with one punch, and Rocky wanted to change training methods so that whatever Adonis hits, he breaks. This is further proven that he won 77% of his fights by knockout. It's also worth mentioning that Ricky had never been knocked down or defeated until he fought Adonis, so one can assume he has excellent defensive abilities. Despite all of this, Conlon is hot-headed and vile, as he purposely traded jabs at the Creed Legacy name, and was constantly condescending towards Adonis. Although we only saw where Wheeler pushed Conlon who then threw a punch, I wouldn't be surprised if Ricky had started the confrontation, given how the press conference plays out between himself and Adonis. Conlon is most likely using these tactics to get inside the head of his opponents, which Rocky predicts, as he tries to tell Adonis to not buy any of the trash talk that he's spewing. Conlon is also full of himself, as he thinks he and Rocky are in the same category, though this belief again comes from the fact that Conlon has not been defeated nor knocked down. All of that being said, I would like to think that Conlon is perhaps a mid-tier opponent compared to those we've seen in prior Rocky films and Creed films past the first one. I would say he's certainly more interesting than Mason Dixon and Tommy Gunn to an extent, though I don't know if I could say if he's as memorable or as dangerous as the likes of Apollo Creed, Clever Lang, and Ivan Drago. Perhaps I'll rank the opponents of the film series one day if it's of any interest to the viewer. Let's also talk about the similarities that Ricky Conlon shares with other characters in the franchise. This is what I think makes Conlon unique. On the surface, he seems like a throwaway creation, yet he seems to be a combination of previous opponents that Rocky has faced. Like Rocky Balboa, Conlon rose up through the ranks to be the champion in a Rax to Riches story, with the key difference that Rocky was handpicked by Apollo. Conlon is undefeated for a time, similarly to Apollo Creed, Clever Lang, and Mason Dixon, former champions we've seen in the series. It should also be noted that like Creed and Dixon, Conlon had a 30 plus winning streak. Because of his upcoming prison sentence, Conlon has a criminal history like Clever Lang and Dame Anderson. Until his fights with Adonis, Conlon shares another similarity to Apollo that he had not been defeated or knocked down, of course, until Apollo fought Balboa. Another parallel he shares with Clever Lang is that they both have a temper and trash talk their opponents, someone they would both fight on two occasions. Because of this, Conlon gets into altercations with his opponents in public outings like Rocky did with Clubber, Apollo did with Ivan Drago, and Adonis with Victor Drago. Ricky shares a parallel with Rocky, Apollo, and Ivan by also being a father. Though we don't have the full story or background of his trainer, it's clear that Tommy Holiday is not just his trainer, but also a mentor and father figure similar to Tony Duke Evers and Mickey Goldmill, evident by the fact that he wants to make sure Ricky's children are taken care of. Ricky would underestimate Adonis like Apollo, Ivan, and Mason would underestimate Rocky. Like Apollo, Ricky eventually suffers his loss to a rival he previously beat in what was thought to be the last match at the time, in Apollo's case, it was until the events of Rocky IV. Ricky Conlon is the second major opponent to not be from the US after Ivan Drago, as he's from England. It should be noted that he also has an extravagant entrance like Apollo Creed, Ivan Drago, Adonis Creed, and Felix Chavez. Like Mason Dixon, Ricky Conlon takes a bit of a backseat role as an antagonist, as the film he is in is more about the title character's journey, much like Rocky Balboa was focused on Rocky overcoming the stuff in the basement. Ricky wears black trunks like Tommy Gunn, Clever Lang, and Dame Anderson, though it has a different style of trunks and trim. Conlon retired as an undefeated champion similar to Mason Dixon, at least as far as we know, though later came out of retirement to fight Adonis. Speaking of retirement, three other fighters did this as well to fight one last time. Rocky Balboa, Apollo Creed, and Adonis Creed. Ricky has both the height and reach advantage over his opponent, similar to Ivan Drago and Apollo Creed, as he also pops jabs from the outside like the latter. He also shares some similarities with Ivan in his fight with Adonis. He is phased when he is cut by his opponent's punch, both which happen on the left side of their face, and is surprised that his opponent gets up after a knockdown. The final round between Adonis and Ricky is very similar to the rematch between Rocky and Apollo, as they slug it out and trade punches. Like Rocky did with Apollo, Adonis goes the distance with Ricky, though both champions retain their championship by split decision after this fight. However, like Apollo did in his rematch with Rocky, Conlon gives Adonis his respect after their fight. Lastly, Conlon is the third major opponent to be portrayed by a real-life boxer, Tony Bellew. Who is Ricky Conlon based on? 
As I mentioned in the previous section, it's clear that Colin is an amalgamation of previous opponents in the Rocky series. While I'm unsure of any real world basis of Colin as a character, it is worth bringing up that he is played by real life boxer Tony Bellew. Like Conlon, Tony is an English boxer who primarily competed from 2007 to 2018 in the classes of light heavyweight, cruiserweight, and heavyweight. He held the WBC cruiserweight title from 2016 to 2017, held the British and Commonwealth light heavyweight titles between 2010 and 2014, the European cruiserweight title from 2015 to 2016, and as an amateur was a three-time ABA heavyweight champion. Tony was nicknamed the Bomber, and rightly so. Like Conlon, he had punching power and was known for getting in heated confrontations at weigh-ins. Ironically, two years before starring in Creed, Tony would lose to an Adonis in the sixth round for the WBC and the ring light heavyweight titles. Nonetheless, Tony would retire in 2018 with a career of 30 wins and 3 losses. I would highly suggest checking out two videos if you're interested in learning more about Tony's career. Tony Bellew's Fascinating Story So Far by Sky Sports Boxing and Boxing Life Stories Tony Bellew by Boxing Life Stories. Let's also talk about Ricky's fighting style. Conlon fights in the orthodox stance. He was very quick as shown during the montage as he clearly hit the speed bag much faster than Adonis. This would be later proven true as Adonis remarked on Conlon's quickness. The fact that he was able to break a jaw with a single punch also attests to how strong Conlon was and would put him in the rankings of stronger opponents in the Rocky and Creed universe, at least in terms of punching strength. Like Apollo Creed, Conlon would fight from the outside, throwing jabs to keep his opponent at bay thanks to his reach and would also showboat and smile like Creed would as well. However, Ricky would not be afraid to trade punches either, as shown in the middle and second half of his fight with Adonis in the first film. This would make him a deadly opponent, as he would be able to not only fight from the outside as a favorable strategy, but also move in and go for punishment if he needed to. Conlon favors the clinch, smartly using it to avoid more damage and to reset the situation between him and his opponent. Like Apollo, he uses very quick combinations to wear his opponent down. This also makes him a very good counterpuncher, as seen in the third round of the first fight with Adonis, as he punishes Adonis for making mistakes. However, Conlon isn't impossible to beat. Thanks to Rocky's training, Conlon is more susceptible to body shots over time, as they start to take a toll on him, specifically near the end of the fight. This also focuses him to use the clinch again, to where Adonis can now trap and punish Conlon if need be. It should also be noted, as I stated in my Adonis video, that Adonis is able to trap Ricky in the corner and counter with the hook in a similar manner to how Wheeler won the sparring match with Adonis, hinting that Wheeler may have been able to beat Conlon. In Creed 3, Ricky seemingly doesn't skip a beat and still has all the old tricks up his sleeve after prison. He dominates the first round against Adonis again, still using the same quick combinations, and countering Adonis' strategy like before. However, Adonis starts to analyze both his pattern and weak points, again using body blows to take Conlon down to the canvas. Here are my final thoughts on Ricky Conlon. Despite not being larger than life as Apollo Creed, Clubber Lang, and Ivan Drago, upon further reflection, I think Conlon was still a strong major opponent for Adonis to face. Similarly to how Dame's story playing out as the Rocky Balboa-like underdog arc taking a dark turn, Conlon at times was way more vicious than Apollo was towards Rocky. While Creed focuses on Adonis accepting the namesake and trying to form his own legacy, similar to how Rocky Balboa was about fighting past the past and fears, Conlon still proved to be a much more memorable opponent compared to the likes of Mason Dixon and Tommy Gunn. Although briefly, it was good to see that they brought him back for Creed 3, and though Adonis swiftly defeated him, I think that was meant to show how far Adonis had come as a fighter. Conlon did have some death and dimension as well, and perhaps if they decided to expand the universe even more, we could take a brief look into his career prior to the Creed films. All of that aside, Conlon was no joke as a champion. Let me know what you guys think down below. What do you think of Ricky Conlon as a fighter? If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it, subscribe, share it with your friends and comment as these all help my channel grow. By the way, if you haven't seen it already, be sure to check out my first video on the Terminator franchise, why the Terminator is one of the best characters ever. Let me know what you think, and if you guys like it, I'll cover more from this franchise. Be sure to check out and subscribe to my gaming channel. I've got some new clips from Street Fighter 6, and I'll be uploading more clips in between editing the videos on my main channel. Supporting the gaming channel helps me support this channel, and my goal is to reach a thousand subscribers, so any help and support are appreciated. Keep up with me on my social media via Instagram. Thanks for watching, stay beautiful, stay awesome, and we'll catch you around next time.